Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today, we're gonna to do some Q&As. Uh, and there's all kinds, so we're gonna cover a few of them. We're also gonna talk about what we're doing in the next few videos as well. And uh, we'll cover some new product that I think will be pretty interesting. So, let's get started. Uh, so, first question is gonna be from Tennessee Saint. Now, Tennessee Saint's got a question and has to do with the mixer. So we're gonna turn around, grab the mixer that we have here and he's referencing this little guy. Now we've had a lot of questions when it comes to this little guy because it's extremely affordable and does an awful lot. The model of this is a PMX U48BT and it's from Pile. Now it ranges anywhere between 50 to $100 and it has Bluetooth on it. It also has XLR outputs on it and it has a USB. Now, first cover, a lot of questions people ask and does it work on a computer? No, it has an MP3 player on it and Bluetooth, that's it. Uh, so no, you're not gonna be able to plug this into a computer. To solve that problem, what you do is spend just a couple of extra dollars and you buy this one. Now, and I mean a couple, I mean this is probably $15 more than that guy, 20 in Canada, I guess. Uh, here, you're gonna get, this is called the PMXU 43BT. Now with the BT, you also get a USB cable included and it does give you an audio interface that goes to your computer and back. Now, some people do have issues with different types of software program and that's gonna vary with, well, not just this mixer, but a lot of mixers. Uh, so it's always good to check the software and see if you have any issues with that. Uh, a lot of times you do have to do driver updates, stuff like that, if needed. Most of the time it's just plug and play here. I never have a problem. These things just all seem to work. My computer's always kept up to date. Um, it works pretty straightforward. So uh, in that case, that's what's going on here. If you wanna hook it up to your computer, you're still gonna get Bluetooth, you're still gonna get an MP3 player, but you're gonna get a USB cable that's going to be able to plug into your computer and you'll be able to go straight from here to your computer. I've done it many times, no problem. Uh, you can also go straight from here to, let's say, a DSLR, if it has just a mic input, you can do that with this guy as well. Uh, that being said, right now, because of the way the world is spinning, the manufacturer, in this case, Pile, I think this is probably happening with other manufacturers, uh, can't always get all the parts made at the same factory. So though the product itself as a whole is the same, uh, you might notice a model number like 0.5 at the end. And that, for some particular reason, is how Pile designates what factory made the actual unit. Doesn't make one better than the other. I get a lot of those questions too. Oh, I've noticed that this model has a 0.5 on it or that model has a 0.5. Uh, it doesn't make it better. What it's really saying is it wasn't made at the exact same factory or all the parts that are inside didn't come from the exact same factory it did last time it was made. That's all it's saying. Uh, and that's just their way of keeping track of things. Uh, I called Pile, asked their customer support, their product specialists down there in the States, what was this all about? And that's what they came back to me with. So, and it makes sense, makes sense. But for them, that's how they track it. So there we go. Now, for the actual question from a Tennessee Saint, he wants to know about Bluetooth. And does it, or is there a way to have multiple Bluetooth devices connect to this unit to mix? Now. No, it only has one Bluetooth input on it, but there is a way around that. Uh, the mixers might be a little small for doing this, but you can get on Amazon, we sell these guys too, uh, and they're basically Bluetooth interfaces. Uh, to be specific, this guy here, is, it's an audio transmitter and receiver. It's a two-in-one adapter. Um, it allows for a 3.5 to be connected here and I can then plug that into here or into another mixer or into anything else that I want. I can either go 3.5, 3.5, because that's what's included, or you can get yourself a proper cable. Uh, let's say I needed to plug it into the mixer, I can go out and get one of these guys, which is a 3.5, two channel stereo connection to uh, unbalanced uh, quarter inch. This means I can plug this into here and I can plug this into here. I'm gonna set the switch here as a receiver, so it's gonna receive a signal. I can pair off to this, and this will connect to that. It's Bluetooth 5.0, so very small, as tight latency as they can get on a unit like this. Uh, I wouldn't use it still for live necessarily, but um, the quality is excellent because version five has no compression on the audio, 
So we're not losing anything because we did that. Uh, and the range is pretty good on these boxes. It usually comes down to your device more than the actual unit. So anywhere between 30 to 100 feet, depending on how you're gonna be using it. So that's option number one. I'll have a link for that down below. Option number two, so now with this one, this isn't actually Bluetooth, but it's for people who have a digital input. So if you had, let's say, an optical cable and you need to get that optical or digital coax, which is what's recited, I need to get that information. Usually it's for people who are doing karaoke and they wanna capture it off the TV. You can use this and go straight into this unit here. Uh, that's a nice white. This box happens to have even more on it because besides being a converter from digital to analog, uh, it also has the ability to plug a headphone in to control the volume directly from here. So if you need some privacy or you wanna use it on your TV uh, or just play the headphones through it from an optical source, you can do that too. That's what comes out with a box like this. And uh, option number three is again, back to Bluetooth. Uh, this is from Alto, it's called a Bluetooth Alto Total. Uh, this basically plugs in like a microphone or a line input, plugs right into either your combo jacks or your XLR connections on your mixer or on the back of any of your equipment. And it allows you to basically connect to here. This has got phenomenal range. This goes from 50 to 100 feet, depending on your circumstances, and it's rechargeable. So uh, this is pretty much a foolproof product when it comes to adding Bluetooth to any pro type style equipment. Uh, it also has the ability to go from uh, a DB level that's set for a mic or set for a line just by toggling the switch. And if you really want to spoil yourself and you're using these on speakers, not necessarily a mixer, or I do have a customer who uh, wanted to have two channels occupied so we can control both channels separately, uh, you can link two of these together so they work in tandem. You, one becomes a left and one becomes a right, that sort of thing. Anyways, but that's from Alto, and it's the Bluetooth Total. I know I looked at it, but we sell like tons of that stuff. So, I hope that helps. So, you might wanna get a bigger mixer if you plan on going any of those routes, because really here you only have four options when it comes to line inputs. You've got two mic line combo jacks, two channels off to the side, and then of course the built-in options on the unit itself. I do like the XLR outputs. So a question from Andrea, and it has to do on the Pro FX4 V2. So it has effects, but it has no USB four channels version two. Uh, we've now gotten ourselves to version four, but Andrea, if you actually have this one, the question is um, hooking it up to a computer uh, with two jacks uh, to a mini jack, which is what I have here. Uh, cable out of the mains. What's the advantage of plugging it in uh, with a USB now? First, there is a, if you own this mixer, awesome, kudos to you, nice mixer. Uh, this cable, as is, you have to make sure that you get two unbalanced to a mono, which would look like an unbalanced. So this particular cable here, which is the most common cable that we would have, uh, isn't going to work because it is basically an unbalanced left, right channel to a stereo connection, which basically looks like a balanced connection there. Uh, also, problem number two with hooking this straight up to a computer as is, is if you have a newer computer that does not have a separate mic input, um, you're gonna have an issue because now all of a sudden, instead of having just two breaks, so left, right, and, and the common, you are now gonna have left, right for audio, and then you're gonna have another ring which is going to be for the microphone, and then you're still gonna have a common on top of all that. So, bit of a problem there. Uh, you can just go on Amazon and buy an external USB sound card, which costs like five to 10 bucks. It'll have separate mic line. If you're lucky enough, you find one that actually has line input and mic input, because that comes down to problem number three. Uh, the input, it's a microphone line. It's a hot signal. It's live, it's got a lot of current. It's very sensitive, very responsive. So you tend not to get a lot out of the mixer or you have to turn the mic input really down low as an input on your laptop. So uh, there are options you can buy. So I was gonna get a cable that had a USB on one end and two quarter inch, but I appear not to have that anymore. So uh, another option is to get, like you said, your main two quarter inch outputs, but at this end, it's USB. It's got a little box on it. It's got a little uh, analog to digital converter built in. So it plugs into your computer. Uh, those are also available on Amazon. So again, if you own this mixer, there are options. 
you can get that little USB sound card. Uh, you can get the cable that has a little USB sound card built into it so it's properly line leveled into your system uh, digitally. That's a pretty good way to go. Uh, if you haven't bought the mixer yet, I got that one covered. You can go out and buy the Pro FX6 V3. Uh, that one actually has USB on it. So no more mixer on it, but does have USB and it does have the ability to have uh, up to six total channels, which is two channels out, four channels in. That's built into this machine right here. So uh, that's an option right there. But again, if you've already purchased this one and you've had this one for a while, by all means, just go out there and get the cable. What I'm gonna do for you is I will put a link down to the proper cable, hopefully we can find on Amazon, which will have USB at this end and two line levels at that end. So there you go. So a new question from, and I, excuse me if I'm not pronouncing this right, the Schreiber family, uh, basically asking my opinion, which I think is better, either the X-Vibe U4, which is a wireless monitoring system, headphone monitoring system, comes with a transmitter and receiver, which works at a 2.4 gigahertz, versus uh, Pyle's PDWM N49, which is a full-on UHF in-ear wireless system. Now, if you have the 49, it's not a bad system. You do need to buy some proper in-ear headphones for it, the, the monitors, uh, because they do give you a free pair in the box. But the only thing I can say about the pair that came in the box is they were free. Um, they just want to make sure when you buy it, you get enough equipment so you can plug it in and use it right away. But I definitely would buy a set of Shures to go with that. Uh, as for the U4, which is probably in the same price thereabouts, I think it's an excellent product. I think if we waited a year down the road from now, we'd probably even see an alternative product from Pile offering the exact same thing for maybe $50, $60 cheaper, that kind of thing. Um, the U4 does a really good job. They've created a good line of product, um, which is kind of similar to, to some of the other brands out there, but their in-ear monitor right now, I consider it a standalone piece. Um, you can have them either grouped with other people that have the receiver so this way you can share the same type of music or you can use it for different monitor setups so if you're going to be investing your money into a new system for in-ear monitors and you don't want to spend a thousand dollars you're going to absolutely fall in love with the u4 so we have a question next one from nice stuff and that's what a z not a c and uh, his question uh, can you stream live with this and this happens to be this unit right here which is the PMX EU 48 BT, we were talking about this earlier. I think a lot of people, like I said, take interest in this because of the price. No, because it doesn't have USB like we were mentioning earlier. Uh, the, it only has an MP3 player built into it. So the 43, like we had on the earlier clip, that would be what you're looking for if you're looking for a USB mixer. So there's a lot of mixers, by the way, in that price range that'll do the job. There's uh, one from Alesis called the Multimix 4. Uh, FX, I think it is, USB as well at the end of the model number. That'll do that. Or you can get one of these guys, which we'll talk about in a second. So, you know, you can get an M-Audio uh, Air 19.2 slash 4 as an audio interface, which is a great way to go. So here we go. New question, and it has to do, well, actually with the smaller version of this. This happens to be the 12-channel version. It's called the Pro FX this case 12 v3 and also his question is on the 10 so uh this is from denver the question and uh, i've had this question before and i've had it previously on previous versions this is the v3 and his questions on the software now the software is quite in depth uh though like if you watch me do the unboxing where i talk about what comes in the box it comes with a cheater card in the box it doesn't come with a manual uh there's of course you know, this is 2020, there's no more CDs and stuff like that in the box. You have to go to Mackie's website, download the driver package because this is not a generic audio driver package, but it does work with everything once you download it. And then you go on your computer where your little speaker icon is and go to your sound cards and you can change what you're gonna be listening to. That's what you're gonna to need to do when you get a mixer like this. Something that has multi-channel to it. Uh, again, this is, yeah. So this is two out and four in, because I can use uh, two of the USB channels for one, for listening with my headphones on, uh, and then I can have another two as inserted into the actual mix. So 
go to Mackey's website, go look at the Pro FX, their website's cool, the Pro FX V3 series, and uh, find your model and download software. Software is the same for all of them. It's the same sound card they use for all their machines. But there you go, Denver, I hope that helps. But yes, go to their website, download their driver package, go on your computer, when you plug it in, it should automatically now recognize it and it should let you use it. There you go. So Troy here also has a question about, in this case, the actual 12 channel from Mackie, the new one, the V3. How many monitors can you run through this board? There we go. How many monitors can you run through this board? Now, built into it is just one monitor output. That is going to be what the green knobs are right here. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can probably bypass the effects that are in here and throw another monitor off of the effects. And then you'd have two controls. You use the green and the yellow knobs here to control it. Um, outside of that, that's what's built in. Um, if you want, you can daisy chain a bunch of monitors, but of course they'll be, everybody will be listening to whatever you dialed into here. Or again, if you're not gonna use these effects, maybe you're using an external, you can then use the yellow knobs with the FX send option here. So that's it. I hope that one helps for you. Uh, as a side note to that is uh, if you have somebody who needs to use a monitor and it's gonna be the same as everything else. So one person doesn't care that they get the entire band coming out on their monitor. You can use the headphone jack uh, to come out of that. And again, you use that auxiliary cable, which we have here. So you can either get a proper one that has a balanced headphone jack on one end, you know, quarter inch, and then comes off of here with both channels and you'd be able to plug that into a monitor as well. But remember that headphone jack output or control room would also work. Uh, the control room output would be the whole mixing board, whatever's turned on to come out that channel. There you go. All right, next question is from Brian, who actually publicly subscribes to my channel, so I wanna say thank you very much, Brian, for being a subscriber. And uh, his question is, and this is in reference to the Alto TS3 series, so the powered speakers from Alto. If they're so good, why are all the major retailers all dropping the entire Alto line of speakers? Brian, uh, you might have noticed that they're not in stock unless somebody actually like came out and said, oh, we dropped the line because of this. And if it's a salesman who said that to you, they're probably just BSing because they don't have any and they're trying to talk into something else because you may have gone in uh, looking for the Alto line and uh, you know, a really bad salesman would have just pitched that out at you thinking, oh, I have to like, you know, bait him into something else. But in the reality is, this is all has to do with no stock. Uh, and initially it's been a consistent problem since the TS3 came out. So for let's say the last year, uh, every quarter when they have shipments coming in, they're manufacturing against what they've sold before and what they think they're gonna sell. And they've always fallen short because their customer base and people looking for the TS3 series has grown faster than they can keep up with demand. So they've always run short, always, always have run short on product uh, so everybody's gotten sold out every quarter and then all of a sudden product shows up again and everybody's yay, buying into it again. Now, what's happened in the last quarter, so we're gonna say the product that should have shown up somewhere around Christmas or there after Christmas, all of a sudden shipments started getting delayed, postponed, things weren't coming out as quickly as they needed to be coming out. And that turned into what we have now with the whole, you know, COVID-19 going on around the world. So this is making things really, really slow. So no, they haven't stopped manufacturing it. Uh, actually, they've been working on tweaking it a little bit to make it even better than it was before, a little bit more durable or so they say. Uh, but the good news is it's gonna come back and it's gonna be back in stock. And we're gonna see that arrive hopefully sometime next month. So that would probably bring us into May. Uh, but it'll all be back in stock and everything will be fine and the world will be still spinning and will be happy to sell their product. But nobody that I know, and I know a lot of people, have dropped the product. Everybody I know has complained about the fact there's no stock. Uh, it's a very popular piece in its price point and there's no reason for a major retailer who does carry Alto speakers to say they don't wanna carry it anymore because of any oddball reason. Uh, Alto has always been good to the retailer uh, in that case. There's been issues, they always, they're always always up there taking care of things. So as a brand goes in a company, as a retailer, I really like the, the 
relationship. And as a product, for the amount of bang for the buck the consumer gets, reliability-wise, performance-wise, everything you're usually looking for, it's in the product. So don't worry about it. It'll be back. And again, thanks, Brian, for being a subscriber. Following Brian is Doug. Doug's question happens to be on exactly the same brand. They just lined up that way. And uh, his question is on the TS310 from Alto. Now, I just finished saying how like awesome they are and how they will be back in stock. And he's got a question on the TS310. By the way, we're sold out of the, the display's gone, everything's gone, but we do have a 308. I'll grab it right here. Now, his question on the actual 310 is how to set it up as a monitor. Uh, wants to have maximum output with no feedback, and he doesn't see any switch on the back to set it up as a monitor. And that is true. There is no switch on the back because it is already set up as a monitor. It is what they call an FRFR, full frequency flat response speaker, which basically means if you don't turn the contour on in the back, so we'll spin that around. If you don't engage the contour on the back, you leave it at unity on top straight up. There you go, you've done it, it is done. Set it up as a wedge in front of you and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. Um, you know, you can contour it if you're not using it as a monitor and you wanna punch it up a little bit, you're more than welcome to do that. But this speaker will fit in no problem right in front of you. Now, by the way, I still think there's some eight inches kicking around, I know we have them of course, but uh, the 10 inches will be back in stock soon, probably next month. But yeah, you don't have to do anything. There's no, there's no dance mode, club mode, monitor mode, all that kind of stuff. There's none of that going on in the back of their speakers. They leave that up to you. But all you have to do is make sure the contour is not on. You'll be really happy. And if you set it on the floor in front of you, like a monitor, you'll be able to turn up the volume because the microphone and speaker will be in the same direction. You'll get more gain out of it. If you find you're not getting enough gain, your mic is probably a little hot. So turn down the gain on your mic a little bit. Turn the level up a little bit higher offset it, you'll be back in business. Thank you, Doug, for the question. So this is gonna be a, the last actual question for this set, and then we're gonna talk a bit about what's coming up. And it's uh, from, and if I'm not reading this right, because you know, you try and put the brakes in sometimes people's usernames and hopefully you get it right. I think it's Gorilla Unit 99. Now, question is, and this has reference to do to the quick live video that I did of unboxing the uh, Blast King 18 inch powered subwoofer. And the question is, uh, how does this compare to the Alto TS3 series? How much bass difference is there between the sub and blade top? So, so when it comes to the brands, it really, uh, Alto is trying to be very general and having a good flat response speaker that can do an awful lot of bass if you wanted to. You just hit the contour button and punch it up, or maybe you're going to do it on the mixer. Now, in that price range that uh, Alto is going in, uh, which is a little lower than where Blast King is, they are doing really, really well at the product. So it doesn't matter if you're in a band or a DJ, that sort of thing, you tend to really like the product. But if you're looking to move up, but you really want to have something for EDM, uh, techno, house, uh, hip hop, that sort of stuff, and you want to have that extra punch in the bass. So it's not like, you know, band, I wouldn't necessarily put it on that category, though Blast King probably would go, well, you can use it for a band. Yeah, I probably could. But if you're looking more for club style sound out of a speaker, that's where Blast King comes in. Now remember, they do cost a little bit more. They're somewhere closer to, let's say, the ZLX, or now that the JBL Eons have dropped their price points, more in that price range. But uh, definitely huge amount of punch, uh, worth way more than they sell them for right now, that's for sure, I can guarantee you that. Uh, that's why I bought into them. Uh, we do a lot of um, DJs, we do a lot of people that do techno, house, hip hop, all that kind of stuff, even if it's for home. They just want the extra power and, you know, extra bass at the bottom end, and they want crazy volume. That's where Blasting comes in. So, like I said, our number one seller, probably right now, is Alto, though we don't have any. Um, but I think in a short period of time, in the next six months or so, we're gonna see Blasting really cut into that market share that we normally had just for Alto. So, there you go. Now let's talk about what's right beside me. Now this is what we're gonna be talking about for the next week. 
Uh, we're gonna have a whole bunch of videos on audio interfaces, audio interfaces versus mixers, that sort of thing. Uh, I was hoping to have a couple of other brands, but they haven't arrived yet. But right now we did get our shipment in for M Audio. And why are we gonna do a lot of audio interface? Because right now people are at home and people are trying to do other things. And I've been getting a ton of questions on this. Customers have been looking to buy into this right now. So I figured this is what people want to talk about a little bit. So we're going to be covering these kind of guys. You can buy them as a kit, which is something like this here, which basically gets you a condenser microphone, audio interface, and a headphone, which by the way, this is an awesome buy right here. Other companies make kits. Um, I just happen to really like what M Audio does with their big knob. It's just easier to control. And they also have different sizes and the other companies do too. So if we can get the other brands in here, no problem. We'll also talk about condenser microphones, which is what's been sitting on the table here. And this isn't what we've been using today. We've been using the actual lapel mic. Now, the difference between having a lapel and a condenser microphone, depending on how you're gonna use it, and also the advantages of having either a audio interface with an XLR cable connection so I can plug my gear into it, USB output on the back, why some of them have MIDI interfaces in them, some of them don't have MIDI interfaces built into them, and also USB style condenser microphones. That's what all the next videos are gonna be about. So stay tuned, make sure if you haven't subscribed, if you're watching this video, you probably have, so I'm gonna say thank you very much. But if you haven't, by all means, jump in there, hit the subscribe button. If these are the type of videos you'd like to see, hitting the subscribe button is gonna put you in the right direction. So I wanna say thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next video, which will be very soon, very soon, hopefully only in a day, we'll have a new video for you. Bye for now, talk to you next time.